Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. The other day, Justin Trudeau had to go into, back into Alberta. He went into Calgary because when he was there with the housing announcement, he snubbed her and it didn't do well in his polling numbers. And, you know, these politicians live and die by polls. So it, this time he went back to Edmund, to Alberta, but he went into Calgary and then he had Danielle Smith come talk to him in Calgary, probably for in his mind, then he wasn't talking to her in her capital city or whatever it was. Either way, it's significant in the sense that people noticed that he should not have treated her that way and that he did and that he seems to be at war with every premier in the country. However, before I get into the tirade that he went on, this meandering rant about all of the questions that he wants to say against certain conservative members, I would encourage you to like and I would encourage you to comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. That one's really important. The other ones are enjoyable and I, and I really like them and, and they do get the algorithm to sh sort of share it out with, uh, with other people. But with the notification bell, they will send it to you directly, which should be able to circumvent Bill C-11, where the CRTC and the Liberal government are trying to silence Canadian content creators, especially ones they don't agree with. Let's get into this. What governments can do to make sure people are having the best possible future. Uh, because we all know times are tough right now. There's challenges around inflation, challenges around affordability, particularly around housing and groceries. And that's why as a government, we've continued to step up. And it hasn't been automatic and it hasn't been easy because there's a lot of different perspectives on how to best help Canadians to move forward. P underpinning all of that with better data collections. I'm going to have to stop it as we go along. He says so many absurd things and I want to just tackle them one at a time. Like the idea that somehow the, the state of the economy is a challenge. It wasn't manufactured. But don't worry about it because now we are now the new thing is that they're collecting data better so they're spying on your phone a little more and they're deciding who's you know who's going to be more broke than less broke and where they can cram in another 15 minute city but none of that is what he said he just said that it's all we're all in this together but really he's the one that started it he's the one that created it him and his overlords and we wouldn't be in this mess like other countries of the world were it not for his actions, but he wants to talk to you like you don't know that. And, you know, it's all just, it's just this cosmic wind that came along and caused the whole problem. It's not his fault. No, 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 no. There's challenges. Yeah, okay. But today we're here to talk about dental care. And this year we've already seen 1.3 million seniors sign up for our Canada dental care plan. People will start getting services uh, as of later this spring. So the dental care is everybody signed up for it. If you're over 70 and you, you can sign up for the dental care, then that's great. But we haven't started actually giving you any services yet. We have to find, you know, 30 or 40 dentists that will be able to, to negotiate deals with, you know, a couple of unions here and there. We don't have, but you can sign up. You can register because just like everything with the Liberal Party, just like everything that they talk about, it's a promise that it's on the way just around the corner over there. Don't worry about it. It's right around the bend. Child care in Alberta has saved average families $10,000 per child over the past years. He has no idea if it saved them any money at all. He's just saying that because he, his target audience is to scare women into thinking that if you vote conservative, somehow you're not going to get any child care, which is just ridiculous. The one thing that conservatives do is better than anybody is worry about making money. That's their motivation. That's what they do. And burying your heads in the sand like conservative politicians tend to do, building a smaller future, a smarter future. So you heard him, right? Smaller future. There's, that's what's called a Freudian slip. And the idea that he, you bury your hand, head in the sand. He, he went to a, 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 an art gallery in Toronto. There was a 25 people blocking the door and he ran away. There was two people outside of uh, one of his Ottawa offices that talked to him as he was going down the street, surrounded by his army of bodyguards. 
He wouldn't even answer a question for them. Bury your head in the sand. Yeah, yeah, you're buried in your, you're, you're constantly putting your head in the sand. He will only answer questions from, from the, you know, people that he's given billions of dollars to. This is Calgary. It's the home of uh, Kean, and he wouldn't let him in. See, I, I, it bothers me when I hear people talk about, when they say things that they know are not true, just in an effort to manipulate or misinform or disinform you, it really bothers me. There's no reason, like, you know what? You got to be honest. If you can't be honest, then you're not really uh, of the caliber that you, you claim to be. Stick your head in the sand. Come on. All right. Hi. I'm Jenny de los Reyes from State the Press, stu uh, student publication. Uh, speaking of solutions for the future, what can we expect in the federal budget in addressing the perpetrating student housing crisis in Alberta and across the country? Um, this budget that we're uh, working on right now will be focused on both supporting Canadians now and building a better future for the coming years with a particular recognition uh, that young people in particular are squeezed in struggles, whether it's uh, the challenges around student housing that you highlighted. Uh, one of the things we've seen is a, a, an explosion in the number of international students over the past few years. We need to make sure that those students are being properly supported, getting the best quality education, and that the numbers of people coming in uh, are manageable to the ecosystems that are actually supporting and teaching them. And that's why we've brought forward uh, changes on that. We've Do you see how he just decided that it wasn't his fault that all of the immigration is a fiasco? Sickening. Just sickening. We've also moved forward, not just with various range of programs on housing uh, that are creating uh, more affordable housing, that are working on our Reaching Home program to end homelessness, that it's not just this project or that project that the government's investing in, which is something we're going to continue to do. It's not his money. It's the taxpayer's money. And the taxpayers should be t able to tell him where they want to spend that money. Number one, what do you say to people who aren't buying what you just said? you know, aren't buying your argument. And they're not just all conservatives or mm -hmm. all politicians or all mm -hmm. misinformation people. So what do you say to those people, including premiers, including Premier Smith, who aren't buying that argument? So you got to give us something more to try to convince people of that because there's a lot of people who aren't convinced. They want to pause on April, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. And uh, right now, everyone is stressed out, stressed out with the cost of living. It is a stressful time. There are uh, massive challenges around the world in terms of inflation, in terms of supply chains. Uh, there are wars going on uh, in a way that is putting more pressure on people and, and you know, emotional angst on a whole bunch of people uh, in every community. There is uncertainties. We're still, in some ways, recovering uh, from the effects of the acute pandemic that we just had. Uh, we're dealing with, you know, countries getting more protectionistic in a whole bunch of different ways. There are real challenges in the world right now. And one of the challenges everybody is seeing is climate change. The question is, what do we choose to do with that? What decisions do we make collectively to tackle this problem? means it gets more and more expensive to make the changes that are necessary, not just to protect communities' quality of life, but also to protect our environmental opportunities and growth that we have. So the question becomes, does anyone really think you can build a strong economy for the future without at the same time, fighting climate change and being responsible about the environment. Yes, lots of people. I prefer a cleaner solution, a market-based solution of saying, you know what? If you're behaving in ways that are going to cause pollution that is going to impact the whole community, you should pay for that pollution so the community then doesn't suffer the negative sides of it or have to clean it up on their own dime. That's what we do with people spewing water into uh, wastewater from factories into, into streams. We say, no, 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 you're going to have to clean that up. You're going to have to be responsible for the pollution you create. So that's why putting a price 
on carbon emissions just makes sense because a company that says, oh, you know what? I'm going to avoid paying that price by in investing in a better type of technology. Well, that just makes sense. Would get that money back. And that's what we do with the price on pollution. But think about a family that does decide, oh, okay, you know what, we can get a slightly smaller car, or we're going to replace our windows, we'll go for the slightly more fuel-efficient windows. Well, they actually get more money back because they're spending less on that price on pollution. Oh, come on. So it's a logical way to do things. But yes, it does require putting a price on things right now to say, oh, we'll get rid of the price. They don't talk about the fact that they're also going to get rid of that check the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in the pockets of the vast majority of Canadians. That's a lie. Now, your question, Rick, is sort of, well, that all makes sense. Why are so many people still against it? Well, you know, that's a question we all have to ask. But my job is not to be popular. My job, although it helps, uh, my job, <laughs> my job is to do the right things for Canada now and do the right things for Canadians a generation from now. Now, I promise you, he asked that question, and the answer that I showed you, I cut out a solid five minutes. I mean, he rambled on and on and on. The absurdities that were coming out of his mouth, I feel stupider having had to edit it down. I, I, I swear to you. I, I'm not even exaggerating that. I, I literally had to stop the edit and take a break because it was just so much misinformation. What I left in there is for you to understand that he is saying, the guy asked him, well, what about all these Canadians that don't agree with you? And what he said was, well, why don't they agree with me? I don't know because I'm smarter than they are. This is the same prime minister who thinks that budgets will balance themselves and that he's not going to talk about monetary policy because he's not good at math. Who's going to tell you that this is economic system that he has, this taxation system is going to save not only you, but your grandchildren. So we add into it now this new element that you always hear people like uh, Jordan Peterson talking about, the narcissism, where it's just about, the, and you can see a lot of it, especially him and Stephen Gilbo. The, the idea that they're going to be the Superman with capes and they're just saving everybody and we're all going to build them statues and everybody's phone is going to have them as their, as their wallpaper. It's, it's just not, it doesn't care what you're going through, right? So he says all of this talk, he talks all this talk and then the guy asks him, well, what do you say to those Canadians that don't agree with you? Which is the bulk of the country, right? We know from the parliamentary uh, budgetary office that at least 60% of the people are getting less money than this promise that he's talking about with this fancy check. He just thinks that he's going to be able to wow you with money because that's how he thinks, right? He doesn't care about his standard of living. He thinks that you, like they really believe that you'll just chase every dollar everywhere like you're some sort of, you know, like I don't know what, but you know, they're going to throw a quarter out of the car and you're going to wrestle somebody for it. That's how they think about you. That's what they believe will be enough to drive you to do whatever they want you to do for a little bit of money. That, and, the, and the money that they talk about is for a family of four. If you're a one single person, it's a quarter of what they discussed. But they never mention that. right? They don't talk about the fact that all of these expenses are coming down on, on the individual much harder than anybody else. And as we live in a country that's with ever-growing isolation and separation among people... We see that it impacts greatly, but the parliamentary budgetary office did the calculations on, you know, that, that how the tax grows. Cause every, everything that gas touches, everything that is touches, by the time it gets to you, everybody's had to add that carbon tax on. Nobody's eating this carbon tax, only you, the end consumer. There's no company going anywhere going, oh, well, the, the government has decided to put in a tax. So we're going to eat it because we want to wave a flag and say that we're going to protect the environment. Nope. They're all saying, well, we're just going to have to increase the cost of what we sell because we're going to be increasing the cost of manufacturing, which is why the food is going to be so much more expensive, which is why he put the carbon tax on at the plant, right? So now it, it, the food just going into the ground is going to be 25%, 23% more expensive just to put the seed in the ground, but he doesn't care. 
right? Let's ask them why, why they don't agree with my genius plan that I don't even understand mathematics, but somebody told me to say this and I practiced all my lines. That's exactly how he thinks about the things that he's putting you through. He thinks that if you don't agree with him, that's because you're not smart enough. He thinks that if you don't agree with him, that's because you don't have a vision of the future. And if you don't agree with him, then you somehow don't want uh, the Canada to be this strong, blah, 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 blah. It's all trite. We all know it. We all, those of us that live in the real world, we look around and we say to ourselves, my Lord, I can't, you know, how am I supposed to be able to afford all this? This guy doesn't care because the NDP props him up and he doesn't have to suffer any consequences. Nobody can, you know, it's, what is he on? Scandal number 45? Because he's got the press. Nobody's digging in. Nobody's finding anything. So this is a top-down issue. And the 99% really have to say we've had enough. At least the premiers are saying something on, on our direction. But nobody else seems to, they all seem to be in on it together and from where I'm sitting. And, and I know I'm getting a little wound up about it, but it just makes me so frustrated to have to hear the, the malarkey. Anyway, I, uh, I won't take you too long. I um, appreciate you listening. I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, tell your friends. I'll talk to you next time.